Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR, HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. On this program, we have conversations with international and local thought leaders, helping all of us find solutions to the toughest health issues that we're facing today. Um, I'd like to take a moment first, though, to give thanks to our beloved show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, who's been making this show possible for the past three years. Uh, to learn more about this wonderful company, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. And be sure to join us next time when my dear friend, like 34-year friend, uh, 34 years of friendship, uh, not just that he's, he's not that useful, but that's good, um, psychologist and author, Dr. Roger Hall, he's going to be joining us talking about um, his new book, and it's going to be wonderful. It's about um, being productive while being happy and all kinds of hot tips. And... Um, He's a, a terrific guy, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be sharing his his uh, wonderful, wise ideas. He's kind. He's just a brilliant man. Um, anyway, but also remember that if you can't listen to any of my shows when they are live, you can always hear the recordings, uh, learn more about my guests, and also access tons of free wellness resources anytime on my website at TeresaNicasio.com. That's T with an H, T A. H E R E S A N like Nancy I C A two S's like S S I O dot com. And as I so often do, I'd like to dedicate today's program to a very special group of people. Please join me in taking a moment to acknowledge the behind the scenes superhero scientists like today's guests who are tirelessly trying to figure out the underlying causes of the coronavirus so that we can put all of this behind us. And I don't know about you guys, but I'd sure like this nightmare to be over. And speaking of today's guest, we hit the lotto, folks, because with us today, we again have with us a senior research scientist from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, Dr. Stephanie Seneff. Uh, with degrees in biology, electrical engineering, and computer science, and over 200 published peer-reviewed papers in scientific journals and conference proceedings. Over the past 12 years, her research interests have focused, kind of shifted some focus, um, to the role of toxic chemicals and micronutrient deficiencies in health and disease. Uh, when she was on the show a few months ago, Dr. Seneff shared with us some of her discoveries about glyphosate, so a lot of you heard that and um, probably were a little bit blown away, and we're going to be blown away again today. Um, and she was talking about how glyphosate impacts our digestive system. Uh, today she's going to talk about deuterium and how glyphosate destroys the body's ability to maintain deuterium-depleted water in the mitochondria and what that actually means uh, and how this leads to all kinds of diseases. She'll also be sharing her thoughts about how glyphosate and deuterium may be playing a big role in the COVID pandemic that has literally turned the globe and all of our lives inside out. Thank you so much for taking the time from your packed schedule, Stephanie, to join us again. Talk about this extremely important and, um, shall I say, timely topic. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, we have a lot to cover for people, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, if you want to hear more about what led Dr. Stephanie to where she is today and in all of this, um, again, check the website out, but also you can listen to her last interview um, about glyphosate in the gut. But uh, let's just get get right into this. Uh, this is also big stuff. Um, let's start with deuterium. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I know when you mentioned to me deuterium, I said, what? Uh, I had to, you had to spell it for me. Um, I'm sure a lot of you listen they're going deuterium, huh? Who, what? Uh, but let's just start with what, you know, what the heck is this stuff? 
Right. It's really fascinating. And I have to confess that I really didn't know about the role of deuterium in biology until just last December. And wow. once I got a tip on it, I just took off with it. I, I do this with things. When I get something new that looks like it fits, I just dive in. But I've mm-hmm. been reading lots and lots of papers about deuterium. It is so fascinating. I had no idea uh, of the significance of deuterium in biology. I think, in fact, organisms, um, the whole basis of life practically is focused on uh, handling deuterium the right way so as to make mm-hmm. life possible. It's really, really interesting. And um it just hooks you if you start getting into this situation. You know, getting into that space, you just don't turn back. And I was led to it by Lasso Boros. He's a professor at UCLA in pediatric oncology, and he's uh, he really believes that deuterium is key to many of these chronic diseases that we face today. There's a dis- it's not so much deuterium depletion or deuterium excess as as deuterium mismanagement. Mm. And so the whole thing is it's just like with iron. You know, we have all these minerals that are both toxic and deficient. You know, manganese, iron, zinc, cobalt. Um, Well, lead is is always bad, but there's a set of them that are critical for our enzymes to work but are very toxic if they're sort of in the wrong place at the wrong time. And Mm. I think that's the same thing with deuterium. You almost could think of deuterium as a mineral, but it's it's not a mineral. What it is is a heavy hydrogen atom. Hydrogen is the smallest atom um, in the universe. It has only one proton and one electron very tiny. Uh, it goes to the very top left-hand corner of the periodic table, for those of you who remember chemistry. And hydrogen, of course, is by far the most common atom in our body because water is H2O. It has two hydrogens and one oxygen. So there's lots and lots of hydrogen. I think it makes up like something ridiculous, like 90, I don't know, 90-something percent, maybe 99 percent of the atoms in our body. So we have huge Really? I never knew that. It's a huge number. It may not be 99, but it's 90-something you know, because they're so tiny, you know. And then there are just many, many, many of them. And so deuterium is heavy hydrogen. It has, it's the same thing as hydrogen, a proton and electron, but it also has a, a neutron, which makes it twice as heavy as hydrogen. And that makes a huge difference in how it behaves chemically and physically. So deuterium is very different from hydrogen. Um, but it also can go and make water. You can make a deuterium water. You know, you can make water out of D2O, which is basically two deuteriums and oxygen. And people have been able to do that in the chemistry lab. And if you make that water, in fact, they, they did experiments back in the 70s where they fed this very deuterium-rich water to rats to see what would happen. And the stuff that apparently doesn't taste that different from regular water, but it will kill you. I mean, these rats, it was amazing. They fed them this sugar water that contained very lots and lots of deuterium. And they got they got violent within a within 24 hours. They became very vicious. Their, hair, hair, their fur was up on end, and they were attacking each other. Wow. And by by five or six or seven days, they were dead. I mean, they basically they they eventually kind of killed over and just let the other rats beat them up. You know, they got completely listless and they couldn't do anything after a few days. And then eventually, they all died by by 10 days. I mean, it was yeah. amazing. That makes me want to cry. That's just so sad. I know. <laughs> well, I'm, they're not doing these experiments anymore. They were probably like, oh, my God, we had no idea. I mean, I don't know what yeah. they expected, but, wow, I don't think they expected that, which yeah. makes it shows you that deuterium has to be managed. Now, normally, you'd never see that amount of water, that amount of deuterium in water. It's actually a small amount, like 155 parts per, per million of water. But because there are so many water molecules, that's actually a lot of deuterium atoms compared to, for example, calcium. I think it's like four times as much deuterium in the blood as there is calcium. So in other words, Mm -hmm. although it's rare compared to hydrogen, Mm -hmm. it's still common compared to all Mm -hmm. those minerals. So in and of itself, it's not a problem to have deuterium. We need deuterium, obviously, Uh, but it's it's a matter of amount and, like you said, the the management and where it is, when when and where it is. Mm-hmm. And and that's really fascinating because it gets into the whole structured water thing, which was another passion of mine. I, I mean, I'm still passionate about structured water. That's Gerald, Gerald Pollack's work. I don't know if the mm-hmm. listeners are familiar with Gerald Pollack. Oh, I love him. And I, I had thought, wow, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to get him on the show or something. But I never contacted yeah, him. Yeah, it would be great anyway. if you could. I <laughs> love his Oh, my God, I love him. away by his work. friend of mine mm-hmm. at this point. In fact, I was able to go to his conference that he holds over there in Europe, which was really fun last October. But... Um, mm-hmm. Water is, of course, really, really fascinating. Water is essential for life, and water has really interesting properties. And part of that is, and um, so the water, um, the deuterium in the water, uh, as I said, has different properties from hydrogen. And in fact, it tends to stick. The deuterium tends to uh, to bind more strongly, 
and hydrogen being lighter escapes more easily. So, for example, if you make gas, if you make uh, turn water into a gas, you're going to get a lot less deuterium in that gas than there was mm -hmm. in the original water because it's heavier. It likes to, to bind to the other water molecules. It won't leave the liquid phase. So it so becomes like a, it's like a sluggish. It's like a sluggish yeah, it like it's sluggish sticks, module. It sticks harder to where it to the liquid phase and doesn't want to go into the gas. And the bi microbes make huge uh, take advantage of that. So the microbes in our gut they produce a lot of gases. A lot of people have problems with bloating, you know. Mm -hmm. um, hydrogen gas, methane gas, uh, hydrogen sulfide gas. Those gases all contain hydrogen, mm -hmm. but they contain deuterium. What's called deuterium depleted hydrogen because because the deuterium stays behind in the liquid phase. The the gas that they produce. I think they produce that gas on purpose in order to distill the hydrogen out of the deuterium to get a, a hold of hydrogen that's depleted in deuterium. Hmm. And then those gases get turned into organic matter again. So the, the, the gut microbes make these gases and they turn the gases back into organic matter. Hmm. You know, they make methanol and ethanol and, and uh, formate. These are really simple organic molecules. Eventually they make fats. I mean, all these things come out of that starting with the gas, and the reason for that is because you start with deuterium-depleted hydrogen. Now, the thing is you need to have deuterium-depleted hydrogen in the mitochondria. This is the thing that Laszlo Boros taught me. Very, very uh, interesting that the mitochondria, they produce ATP. So they're, you know, they're the energy workhorses of the body. They produce the energy that supplies the cells. And mm -hmm. mitochondrial dysfunction is behind many, many diseases. There's tons of papers that talk about how you know, the mitochondria aren't, aren't working properly. Mm -hmm. And they're spewing mm -hmm. out oxidative stress, you know, oxi oxidizing agents like superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, these things called reactive oxygen species. The mitochondria are spewing these things out and they're not able to make enough ATP. That's a, mm -hmm. a broken mitochondrion. And when you see that, that's a broken mitochondrion. And chances are it's broken because it has too much deuterium in its intermembrane space. That is so interesting. Isn't that interesting? Be it's because so this, is, this whole mitochondria is, is a hot topic, and then you hear about the NAD that supposedly exactly, helps with Exactly, yep, and that plays a major role, and we'll get into that in a moment, because that's okay. also very, very important and very fascinating, and also ties it right directly to glyphosate. Uh -huh. So um, maybe we should go there now, actually. <laughs> so basically, you want to? The, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the gut microbes do this gas trick, which produces these deuterium-depleted nutrients that then supply, for example, the fats are typically deuterium-depleted. So when you eat a ketogenic diet, you're eating a deuterium-depleted diet. And that's because of this process of making these gases and then turning them into methane um, fats. And so those fats, um, when you eat fats, if you eat butter or, or, or lard, Laszlo found those two out of the ones he tested had the lowest levels. The butter and the lard had the lowest levels of, of deuterium of all the foods he tested. Mm -hmm. So a high-fat diet is a low-deuterium diet. Mm -hmm. and, the, and then the, so, the, um, so those nutrients are fed to the mitochondria, and that provides them with a low-deuterium source. But the mitochondria also have these specialized enzymes that are able to further deplete deuterium. So the, the mitochondria are very careful when they pump protons into the intermembrane space, which they do in order to drive the whole engine that produces the ATP. When they do that, they make sure they're pumping protons, not deuterons. Mm -hmm. So they're, again, they're producing this deuterium-depleted, what, what, what Laszlo calls metabolic water in the, mm -hmm. in the mitochondria that has much lower deuterium than the general, you know, than is in the seawater, for example, mm -hmm. much lower levels of deuterium in the mitochondria. The body obsesses on that, and it has all these enzymes that are called flavoproteins that carry that out. They have special methods they use, which is called proton tunneling. It's really fascinating biophysics, but the deuterons don't tunnel very well because they're so heavy. So mm -hmm. that's another way to sort of select for protons. So they basically have these tricks that the enzymes use to make sure that the mitochondria are depleted in deuterium. And those enzymes that do that, they depend on NAD. So NAD is absolutely essential for deuterium depletion. Mm -hmm. NAD is basically, I would say, the main molecule that carts around deuterium depleted hydrogens on its back and delivers them to the mitochondria ultimately. But the NADH, mm -hmm. so NADH and NADPH are both, that H is definitely H and not D because of the way it's made with these special enzymes. And then when it's passed around to other molecules, it's still H and not D. It probably gets mm -hmm. more and more H and not D to the point where it's just almost impossible for it to be D mm -hmm. by the time it gets delivered to the mitochondria. So it's, it's fascinating with the chemistry. You start to realize that many, many reactions that take place inside the mitochondria are reactions that deplete deuterium. And even you can see all these reactions where there's a reaction byproduct that's water. Like they'll often take oxygen in and take put water out. 
And those are sort of considered just sort of uninteresting parts of the equation, but they turn out to be the main thing the equation is trying to do, is to produce this deuterium-depleted water. Wow. Well, yeah, I just want to say, yeah, and, and last time you were on, you were talking a fair bit about, when you were talking about glyphosate, you were talking about how one of the really nasty things about it is that it disrupts the, you talked a lot about enzymes, it disrupts the enzyme production at certain stages, like in, during the shikimet pathway. Yes. Um, and so, you know, all this talk about enzymes and how critical they are and how they, critical they are for this um, deuterium depletion. This is big stuff, Stephanie. It's really, really interesting. And we can get, uh, I imagine we're close to the break now, but in the next section we can talk about the enzymes, the specific enzymes that glyphosate disrupts and mm -hmm. how they disrupt them. Because once you look at how glyphosate disrupts the enzyme in the chicken mate pathway, it's called EPSP synthase. This is well established. Glyphosate uh, suppresses that enzyme and that prevents the, uh, the pathway from working. And that pathway produces these aromatic amino acids tryptophan, tyrosine, and phenylalanine, those aromatic amino acids are, one, tryptophan is a precursor to NAD. So you can see right there, glyphosate depletes the supply of NAD because the microbes, the microbes have the shikimate pathway, they can't make these, these critical, critical nutrients. You know, and tryptophan in particular, it's a precursor not only to NAD, but also to serotonin and melatonin. Mm -hmm. And those are absolutely essential neurotransmitters, hormones, you know, those in the brain, they're so important. And they yeah. come out of that uh, tryptophan, which is produced by the microbes using an enzyme that glyphosate severely blocks. Wow. So, so again, as a psychologist, this whole tryptophan, serotonin, uh, you know, neurotransmitters, it's, it's critical. We've been seeing such a rise in, in, I mean, I've seen it over, I've been doing this work like, for 30, 40 for, I mean, years or so, uh, as a psychologist doing counseling um, work, and the rise in, in anxiety and depression uh, in not just adults but even children. I don't work with children per se, but um, it's just the rise of it is has been phenomenal during my career, and, and this is a, a really interesting twist. And I can tell you that there's even a paper, a really fascinating paper, that just showed that different parts of the country have different levels of deuterium in their drinking water, and they mm -hmm. were able to do a study where they correlated. So they found that people who had higher levels of deuterium in their drinking water had a higher rate of of depression. It was correlated with depression. Wow. Well, I would love to have that paper. We can add it to your page that. on the yeah, website. Yeah, I can put that a link on your page. Mm -hmm. And then there was, um, and then those, those rats that were exposed to extremely high levels of deuterium and got into this rage, you know, serotonin mm -hmm. deficiency causes uh, aggressive behavior. That, and that's what that these totally. rats were incredibly aggressive when they got exposed to too much de deuterium mm -hmm. Because it disrupted their supply of serotonin, because that depends on these enzymes that don't work when there's too much deuterium. Mm -hmm. So just a translation, folks, is a strong mental health, not just physical, we're going to talk about physical health pieces, but uh, with what we're talking about deuterium, and you will be able to listen again and again to this interview as well as see the other materials that uh, Dr. Seneth is providing, um, but that there's a connection here of uh, excess Deuterium may be, in fact, a big factor or in uh, depression, anxiety, aggression. You know, certainly we've seen a lot of aggression rise in um, North America. Um, so, you know, we do have like another minute or so before the break, a minute or two before the break. Real quickly, can you just give a snapshot to, uh, for our listeners about some of the other physical conditions that, that are also, um, that they've been finding that Dr. Uh, Boros and others have been finding are connected to excess or, or mismanaged, I should say, mismanaged deuterium? Well, a key one is cancer. Mm -hmm. I think it's very clear to me that cancer is actually a disease that comes about because of systemic problems with deuterium throughout the organism. And mm -hmm. the, the tumor is actually a factory which is trying desperately to help the organism to resupply the organism with deuterium depleted nutrients. It's really, really fascinating. Cancer cells, mm -hmm. they have this, you know, very strange metabolism where they, um, they don't use their mitochondria in the normal way. They actually shut down the ATP synthesis step from the mitochondria. And mm -hmm. instead, they do all these other things in their mitochondria that involve providing the mitochondria with deuterium depleted water and then using that water to make nutrients, basic nutrients that can then be used to build um, the DNA and the cell membrane that they need to be able to reproduce. So these cancer cells, they just basically get interested in reproducing them. And mm -hmm. they do that um, through, this, through the mitochondria, a very 
weird way to use the mitochondria, not weird, but just this different way of using the mitochondria to produce these nutrients. So just, again, we're going to go to break here, just a quick minute here, a quick less than a minute. Um, are you saying that the deuterium-depleted water then actually makes cancer worse? It feeds the uh, indirect? No, no, the, the opposite. I'm sorry. Deuterium-depleted water is, a, is very good to take if you have cancer. Oh, okay. The problem is that the mitochondria throughout the body have, have a problem with excess deuterium. Uh-huh. And this is what's driving the cancer to uh-huh. become consumed with. Um, actually, it even makes this deuterium-depleted lactate that it ships out and supplies to the rest of the organism. So it's basically trying to produce nutrients that are deuterium-depleted because the body desperately needs those to fix the mitochondria. And the problem actually is that the whole normal way that deuterium depletion happens is broken, and it's broken by glyphosate. Okay. Well, gosh, let's just keep you all hanging here. We'll, we'll carry on more with this uh, right after the break. So stick around. Dr. Stephanie Sennep will be talking um, more about deuterium glyphosate and also the COVID, um, the COVID pandemic. Oh, when we return, don't go away. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's New Roots Herbal. Herbal.com. Audiobooks gives you instant access to over 50,000 of the best sellers and hottest book titles in romance, mystery, fiction, and many other genres. Just visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Audiobooks to get started. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, the blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. If you're just tuning in, we're here with MIT senior research scientists talking about some very unfamiliar terms for many of you, but um, but I'm wanting to inspire you to know that there's more than you more than the eye can see that it may be extremely important for health. And specifically, we're looking at deuterium glyphosate and, and the COVID pandemic. Uh, and and just a, a quick note before we proceed, this is really high level material that we're covering. And do not feel badly if you do not follow all of it. No problem. You can take notes, and but you can also listen to when the recording is available, and it will be available hopefully forever, um, and so just, just hang in there, and my goal here 
is not for you to master all this, but my goal here is for you to know that there's more here and to, to pique your curiosity because this is cutting edge. This is literally some of the most cutting edge science that we're covering today. Um, and there's even questions for the scientists that are trying to figure out this puzzle. So, so carry on, um, uh, Stephanie, you're on, you're on a roll. <laughs> yeah, so we, you know, we sort of covered this whole idea that mitochondria obsess on getting deuterium depleted water and they'll get it however they can. And uh, the system that does that is very elegant with these flavoproteins. And these flavoproteins are really interesting because they're able to, to take advantage of tunneling to, to choose hydrogen over deuterium. So they have a very special mechanism that allows them to keep the deuterium out and produce a product that has hydrogen instead of deuterium. So, so this is the and, wisdom of the body at work. Yeah, and that's right. And so these enzymes, there's a lot of them, and they're, they're so fascinating. I've been trying to learn every one of them. There's so many, and, and each one seems to play an important role. But their main goal, I think, collectively, is to keep those mitochondria happy. And these enzymes have a characteristic um, motif in their DNA, in their, in their, um, in their code for their, for their protein, the amino acid sequence. There's an amino acid sequence that these five proteins have which has a motif that's called GXGXXG, which means X means wild card and G means glycine. So that is three glycine residues that are absolutely essential for these enzymes to work properly. And that place where they have those three glycine residues is where they bind the flavin. So they have to bind the flavin in order to work, and they have to have the glycine in order to bind the flavin. And people have shown that when you change one of those glycines to something else, the total, the protein's wrecked. It can't do its job. So mm -hmm. I believe that glyphosate is substituting for glycine during protein synthesis, and that's exactly what's going on in EPSB synthase. The enzyme that it famously disrupts has a highly conserved glycine residue at the place where it binds phosphate. And that glycine residue, if you swap it out for alanine, if you change the code and make a version of the enzyme that has alanine there instead of glycine, then that version of the enzyme is completely immune to glyphosate. It has no effect. In other words, that glycine is essential for glyphosate to disrupt the enzyme. And it's a place where it binds phosphate. And all of that's important because glyphosate can set, settle its methylphosphonate unit into the place where the phosphate of the substrate is supposed to go. So glyphosate occupies the space so that the substrate can't fit. And the substrate, in the case of these flavoproteins, is a flavin. So if the flavin can't fit because the glyphosate's hogging the space, the protein doesn't work and can't do its job, and you can't deplete deuterium in the mitochondria. It's very simple. So, it's yeah, so putting it in plain English, basically, you get these, these uh, uh, imposters, these uh, uh, glyphosate molecules that pretend to be glycine, and glycine yeah. is the single most important, it's the most, most common in, the, in some ways, most important, it's the smallest uh, protein molecule in the body. But you get this, this imposter who takes over, yeah. who then disrupts the natural processes of of the, 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 this wide body is able to do because right. of these enzyme processes that then help to deplete the deuterium um, and so the mitochondria work and so that you can actually have energy and function and have the whole balance for your neurotransmitters to be a happy, uh, less anxious, uh, less aggressive human being. And, and yeah, maybe the less synthesis of the neurotransmitters depends on these enzymes. And okay the depletion of the, of the deuterium in the mitochondria depends on these enzymes. All of that falls apart when glyphosate is going around mucking around with these enzymes. It's like putting sugar into the gas tank. Mm -hmm. And the mitochondria not only don't work, so you don't have enough energy, but they also wreck, are a wrecking ball because the mitochondria are releasing these reactive oxygen species that are damaging the cell. And in fact, you know, causing DNA damage, causing DNA mutations that eventually leads to cancer. Mm -hmm. So you wow. know, you'll get to cancer that way too. And now all of these diseases the autoimmune diseases, all these diseases that are going up dramatically in step with glyphosate usage, and there's a whole bunch of them. But they all, they all are, are, there are papers for pretty much all of them that talk about mitochondrial dysfunction as being a critical. They also talk about gut dysbiosis. So they talk about gut dysbiosis leading to all these autoimmune diseases and neurological diseases and cancer, but also um, mitochondrial dysfunction. So both gut dysbiosis and mitochondrial dysfunction can be traced to this deuterium problem that glyphosate is causing. Mm -hmm. That's it's incredible. Now, now, the really interesting part is the sulfate, because I started with sulfate. I figured out that sulfate deficiency is a key driver behind autism. And there's papers that show both for humans and in my studies that heparin sulfate deficiency in the brain, in the, in the brain ventricles, is a key feature of autism in both species. Mm -hmm. And heparin sulfate deficiency is a consequence of an in, in, inadequate supply of sulfate. Serotonin and melatonin are sulfated in transit, they deliver sulfate to the brain. 
And so when they're insufficient, the brain doesn't get enough sulfate. The heparin sulfate becomes deficient. And when that becomes deficient, you don't have um, – heparin sulfate in the brain is essential for brain development. So the mm-hmm. neurons don't develop properly, and you end up with wow. autism. That's, that's wow. a pretty clear story, and that's, there's plenty of literature on that. Wow, that is that's huge. So yeah. this idea that if the, if the tryptophan you know isn't getting produced because it's it's been disrupted by this this whole mechanism, and then so you don't get the serotonin, then you don't get the couriers. The serotonin becomes yeah. a courier for the sulfate, right. which 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 is which is critical for brain development. Holy right. cow! So you've certainly made a connection with the um, uh, with the autism. Are any other neurodegenerative kind well, of yeah. Yeah, I mean, Alzheimer's is the same thing. For example, um, there's a, uh, a, a lipid sulfate, um, uh, sulfatide. Sulfatide is a sulfated uh, fat that is extremely depleted in association with Alzheimer's. I think it's being stolen from the brain because the brain is looking for sulfate any place it can find it. Huh. When, when you strip the myelin sheath, you're also getting sulfate. So the, the body starts trying to raid sulfate from wherever it can find it because the sulfate delivery system is so busted. You know, it's desperate for sulfate. The immune cells are desperate for sulfate. If they don't have enough sulfate, they can't fight off the viruses. And this is where you get into the COVID-19 problem because hmm. glyphosate is a train wreck for the innate immune system. And part of that is this sulfate deficiency problem. Sulfate gels water, and the all the cells have these their um, their exterior with these sulfated complex sulfated sugar chains, so what's called the glycocalyx. That gets back into Gerald Pollock stuff with with the gelled water. And the wow. really interesting thing is the gel traps deuterium. So what <laughs> happens is normally the body is holding the deuterium inside the gel, which actually strengthens the gel, which is good, but also depletes the deuterium in what it releases, which is these protons. So it releases deuterium depleted protons that then go into the cells and supply the mitochondria. So that whole system becomes disrupted because glyphosate is a train wreck for sulfate. Not only sulfate delivery and sulfate transport, but also sulfate synthesis and sulfate activation. All of those enzymes depend critically on glycine residues. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're, we're scratching the surface, people. We still have more to come with Dr. Senef uh, when we return after the break. Uh, don't go away. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's New Roots herbal.com. VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all-in-one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. For the best in business class travel, count on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air has the best price guarantee, 24-7 customer service, and easy booking online or by phone. To experience your hassle-free journey, start by going to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Cheapo Air. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, Food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's (laughs) YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're 
are listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show here today with one of the world's leading voices in science who's been uncovering the role of toxic chemicals, especially glyphosate, in our recent health crises. And as you can imagine, um, you know, given how big glyphosate roundup um, is in our in our world, uh, some of what our guest today is, is sharing is, is, is really huge and has implications. And, and actually, some people don't want to hear about it because change is hard um, when we think about things. Uh, but when we have, when we get bit in the butt like we have now with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, not listening to what uh, some of the underlying mother warts or mother wart might be, um, the price is really, really high. So I, I, I just really appreciate the work that you're doing, Dr. Seneff. Um, and I wonder if you could share a little bit, you've got some thoughts about uh, possible connection of all we're talking about today with a COVID pandemic specifically. Uh, you want to share a bit about that? Yes, well, it seems pretty clear to me that there's a risk factor for COVID-19 that is essentially excess glyphosate exposure because many um, people who are getting a severe disease have these comorbidities that are all these uh, typical diseases that are associated with glyphosate usage on core crops. You can see the, the correlations are stunning in the rise in diabetes and obesity and high blood pressure and, and high cholesterol, all these things that are um, showing up in the population increasing over time in the last two decades in step with the increase in the use of glyphosate on core crops. And, um, and, and also COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that, um, of course, is a very high risk of, um, of bad outcome with COVID-19. And um, glyphosate is associated with all of these diseases. So I sort of think that it's toxic exposures in general, but I suspect glyphosate especially because it's so pervasive in our environment. And we're not aware to watch out for it. So people are going ahead and eating high glyphosate contaminated foods. I've been very concerned lately about glyphosate in bio, biofuels. And I was really quite surprised. I've been doing a deep dive into biofuels lately. These are um, fuels that are derived from um, organic matter, what's called biomass. And you can produce them from the oils, like waste oil from the restaurants, like soybean oil or you can produce them from waste from the forest. When you do the forest industry, when they're harvesting the forest for paper, they get waste products that can be sent into a machinery that turns, spits out this biodiesel fuel. And you can also get it from um, the waste of the crop, like the corn crop or the wheat crop after it's harvested. You just take all that biomass that's the sticks, the stalks and whatnot, and you can run that through the machinery to produce biofuels. And there's aviation biofuels for the airplanes. There's biodiesel for diesel, diesel vehicles, and there's also a biofuel for home heating oil. And, and the New England and, and New York, New York State and New England have played a leadership role in rolling out these biofuels and putting them into vehicles, into airplanes, into home heating oil. And that, and that whole area is a, is a beehive of COVID-19 activity. I mean, really the highest, the worst, uh, New Jersey is the worst state in terms of, um, of COVID-19 infection and, and death, and, and New York City is a very close, New York is a close second with New York City in particular. Boston is not doing well at all either, and all of those places have a lot of biofuel being used in, uh, in various capacities. And I think, first of all, I suspect, and I have not been able to, certainly I haven't proven this, but it's a theory I have that the biofuel is actually releasing glyphosate into the air through incomplete combustion in sort of um, poorly tuned engines and things like that. But it could also be leaking out of the gas tanks. It could be leaking out of the factories where it's being produced. It could be leaking off of the barges when the biomass is being transported. You spray the wheat with glyphosate right before the harvest. You harvest the wheat, and then you take all that glyphosate-contaminated stalks and you run them through this process, releasing glyphosate into the air. So what I think is that we're getting more exposure to glyphosate from the air recently than we did even five, ten years ago, because this has really been ramping out up in recent years. New York City in 2017 passed a mandate that you have to have at least 5% biofuel in your home heating oil, for example. And so that could also be a source for people actually getting, could be getting glyphosate in the air from their home heating oil. Now, this is all speculative. I haven't proven anything. But one thing that has been seen is that the Biofuels produce excess amounts of some of these toxic elements that are known. Diesel is not a good fuel in general, but biodiesel is even worse in terms of the levels of nitrogen oxides and these small nanoparticles that are released from the exhaust fumes. And those things are both going to contribute to increased risk to COVID-19 because the nitrogen oxides actually erode the, um, 
the glycocalyx, they reduce the supply of the heparin sulfate lining the blood vessels, which makes the blood vessels more vulnerable to um, to dysfunction. Mm-hmm. And the um, and the the nanoparticles apparently it is a theory that they can trap uh, the viruses. They've seen that air pollution is a risk factor for COVID-19, so that is already fits my mm-hmm. theory. My suspicion is that we're getting more exposure to glyphosate through the air, and that's sort of a new development in recent in the recent years, which has caused our lungs to get directly exposed to glyphosate, which has caused harm to our lungs such that they are far more vulnerable to infection. They're, they're more easily pick up an infection from a virus. They more easily multiply the virus and release it back out. So in other words, it, it greatly enhances the risk of, of someone infecting somebody else with the disease. It greatly increases the infection rate of the virus and also causes a much more acute disease because the lungs are already injured by the chemicals from the uh, air pollution. This, this just makes so much sense. Okay, people, this is, this is like, I, I was floored. I was reading her, so, um, uh, Stephanie just wrote and published an article it's called Connecting the Dots, Glyphosate and COVID-19, which you can give, a, you know, uh, follow the link and see it from her page that I've created. Um, I was literally floored, and Stephanie, I told my husband, he's, a, he's an air quality specialist. He's done a lot of work also with NOx emission and, you know, NOx emissions and, mm. um, you know, industrial stuff uh, in the past, and, um, you know, he's in looking at things as fuels, and I said you have to read this article um, because I, I, this is the last thing. And I prob- probably you know, all of us I mean, who are listening thinking, well, biofuels isn't that a good thing? You know, in terms right. of it's so sad reduce- because it's a good intention. Yeah, trying to reduce the carbon emissions, you know, greenhouse effect, blah blah blah. And, but but it turns out there's there's a, a whole other story here that um, that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned in your article something about that rat study about um, yeah, the rat. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that because that's that's how I I already knew about that before COVID-19 hit. I was very curious about the vaping fumes from the um, e-cigarettes because I'd been following that. And I was like, oh, this looks like it could be glyphosate because. Um, but tobacco is a, is a glyphosate, is a Roundup Ready crop, to want for one thing. But more than that, there's this glycerol that is added. That's what these e-cigarettes are about. They have this glycerol that is what actually gets burned to make the whole thing work. And the glycerol is a byproduct of the biodiesel industry. So it's, it's so interesting because when you make those biodiesel fuels out of that biomass, you end up with a whole bunch of glycerol left over. So you want to find some way to use the glycerol. Well, why don't you just make up this concept of e-cigarettes Put the glycerol in the e-cigarettes, then you smoke the cigarette. The glycerol is going to be contaminated with glyphosate, so you're going to be breathing it in when you smoke that cigarette. And I think that's what's going on. So you get this lung disease that looks exactly like a COVID-19 infection. It's exactly the same symptoms. And they were getting that before COVID-19 was even around. So it's very, very interesting because I think COVID-19, the disease that we're seeing is not really the disease that the virus causes. It's the disease that the toxic chemical causes when you're exposed to the, to the virus. And that is exactly what this study showed. This study was amazing because they took these rats, they, they exposed them to vaping fumes for three months, and then they infected them with flu virus, thing that it would mess things up. And, in fact, it did. So these, these rats had a very overreaction to the flu virus. Their, their adaptive immune system kicked in and reduced, you know, produced all these cytokines, which are destroying the lung tissue. This is exactly what's happening in these people that get COVID-19. All right, Over the cytokine storm. Adaptive yeah. immune system spewing out these cytokines destroying the lungs, and then glyphosate disrupts the uh, antioxidant capacity. It's very clear. There's lots of papers that show that. Reduce glutathione. They mess up uh, the supply of glutathione, which is a super important antioxidant. So they can't protect themselves. The lungs can't protect themselves from the damage that's being done by, the own, by its own immune system reacting to the virus because glyphosate has messed up the innate immune system. It can't fight off the virus. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, this truly is connecting the dots. And, and again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, don't worry if you're not absorbing all of this, but this can um, spur your curiosity. And, and again, you can read more. Uh, and um, uh, we're going to be um, hearing more from uh, Dr. Seneth soon. She's also writing a book and putting a lot of things together. But um, uh, when we come back, because this is all about All Positive Talk Radio, we're going to talk about solutions, folks. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about treatment and prevention options, you know, what can we do uh, given all of this and given all this information because that's really what this is about. Let's understand what the source of the, if we figure out what the source of the problem is, then we can better figure out what the solutions might be uh, for prevention and treatment. So stick around. We'll be right back uh, after the break with more with Dr. Stephanie Seneff.
Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com. VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all in one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. For the best in business class travel, count on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air has the best price guarantee, 24-7 customer service, and easy booking online or by phone. To experience your hassle-free journey, start by going to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Cheapo Air. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, Food is Medicine Health Tips, Easy Allergy-Free Recipes, and Creative Culinary Inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. We are here today with MIT senior research scientist whose investigations have led to a strong hypothesis that glyphosate, uh, the active ingredient in Roundup, is a key factor in autism epidemic and in many other diseases and actually may in fact be at least a major reason the COVID-19 virus has hit um, so many by storm as well as some issues uh, associated with some vaping. So um, as promised, we're going to talk a little bit about solutions, guys, um, because what can we do? It can be pretty overwhelming hearing, hearing some of these things. Things, but um, well, what what are some things that uh, how, how can we be empowered, Stephanie, um, as we as we look forward? Um, I think there's a lot of uh, things that are low hanging fruit that you can do uh, to help with the deuterium problem. And of course, eating a certified organic diet is an easy choice. It costs a little more for your food, but you're, it's totally worth it in terms of what of the protection from health problems for your whole family. So just buy certified organic. If enough people do that, the farmers will have to grow certified organic food because, mm -hmm. because of consumer demand. So I think that's number one. Get rid of the glyphosate in your food. That can really go a long ways. Number two, of course, if you live near a highway, I would suggest moving because the highways are very toxic, I believe. You know, the, the, the mm -hmm. fumes it, it's being uh, thrown out of the exhaust pipes of all the vehicles that are driving on the highways. I think, especially today, are very toxic. So go to a place where the air is clean. Uh, move to a place if necessary. Stay away from the highways. Even maybe drive on the back roads. I mean, I've been doing that. I've been avoiding the highways mm -hmm. when I drive for that reason. Uh, number three is some interesting treatments. Uh, deuterium depleted water is quite expensive. But if you have cancer, I think it would be a good thing to drink. Uh, it's a direct way to deplete the deuterium in your mitochondria, which is the critical thing to get you back to health. So uh, you can get deuterium depleted water. It's, it's as expensive as wine, so it's very strange to be drinking water that's that expensive. I have never tried it. Uh, hydrogen water is a lot cheaper, and it may be just as good. I don't know because of the research hasn't been done. But because the hydrogen is a gas, it's going to be deuterium depleted. And in fact, mm. the, the, um, there was a paper that showed that the hydrogen gas that was produced by a microbe had only 20 parts per million of de deuterium in it compared to normal water, which is like 155 parts per million. So a tremendous reduction in deuterium in the hydrogen gas that's produced by the bacteria in your gut. And mm -hmm. so um, clearly that's a very, very good source of deuterium-depleted hydrogen. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so perhaps that is one of the major uh, benefits of hydrogen gas, hydrogen and water, which is very easy to obtain with cola cells. It, uh, it's, um, I think it's a really good, uh, very um, good I think to do that isn't expensive and easy mm-hmm. access. Um, mm-hmm. I believe in sunlight, and getting out in the sun is super important, sun exposure to the eyes and to the skin. The sun actually catalyzes these reactions that take place with these viable proteins, so it helps to produce that deuterium-depleted water that's so important for your mm-hmm. mitochondria. So getting out in the sun, uh, don't use the sunscreen, don't use the sunglasses, and make a conscious effort to go outside, take a walk on a sunny day. Mm-hmm. Uh, walking barefoot on the beach, um, on a sunny day is about the best thing you can do in the water because mm-hmm. then you can get good grounding as well, and that's going to give you negative charge, which is going to help to keep your vasculature healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, eating a high-sulfur diet is another thing that I do very consciously. I eat lots of garlic and onions, cruciferous vegetables, and sulfur-containing you know, seafood and, and cheese and eggs, um, grass-fed beef. Those are all good sources of sulfur, and I highly recommend them. So eating mm-hmm. a sulfur-rich diet. Eating a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables because they have these polyphenols, which are actually products of the chicken mate pathway. It's so interesting because the plants, they produce these aromatic amino acids, and then they go on to produce all these fancy molecules that are, um, that are actually very useful for helping to supply deuterium-depleted water. Huh. So, and that also means herbs and spices because herbs and spices are especially have a lot of complicated molecules in them that are going to help your mitochondria. So use a lot of herbs and spices in your cooking. Eat, of course, whole foods. Don't buy processed foods. So pretty much that means don't buy anything in a box and um, and organic, organic whole foods. Mm-hmm. So those are all. I like Epsom salt baths as well, and I've been doing an Epsom salt bath every day since COVID-19 came along because I'm just trying to make sure that I have plenty of sulfur because I think that's maybe the most crucial thing is to have enough sulfur in your body, particularly sulfate, particularly for your um, macrophages, your immune cells, because that will allow them to clear the virus without ever having to call in the adaptive immune system. Your innate immune system ought to be able to clear this virus without issue. And mm-hmm. if it can do that, you won't even get sick. You'll get it, you'll get COVID-19 exposure and you won't even get sick. And that's mm-hmm. my goal. And so far, so far, so good. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. How you know? I, I was um, uh, I've listened a few things with that uh, Dr. Laszlo Boros, um, and he also was talking about rainwater. That rainwater is actually very uh, deuterium oh. depleted. Interesting. I think, was, yeah. I think he said something that's like something like 25 parts per million. Well, or something. and in fact, people who live in places where there's glacier water, glacier water is amazing. Yeah. Because uh-huh. it's naturally quite depleted in, in deuterium, and I've wondered whether that's the reason why, one of the reasons why Iceland, people in Iceland are very healthy and no one can quite figure out why. They have a good source of sulfur from their basalt rock, but they also have a good source of glacier water, so they're getting two really good things. I also wanted mm-hmm. to mention ketogenic diet, because a high-fat diet is a low deuterium diet. Mm-hmm. So, if, you know, err in the direction of fats, and especially, I, I like saturated fats, I like animal-based fats and coconut oil. These are in my opinion, mm-hmm. very healthy fats, and they're very low in deuterium butter and lard, I mentioned earlier, were the lowest deuterium foods that Laszlo found when he was investigating deuterium levels in foods. Well, it makes me wonder, you know, you think about uh, the ketogenic diet as applied to epilepsy and, and you know, the, the, the right. deuterium, wondering how much the ketogenic diet, it's not necessarily about the diet itself, but because it's a deuterium-depleted uh, diet. Exactly so, and this is where I'm like, oh, aha, you know, like all of a sudden everything makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's amazing how you can map everything to this whole deuterium issue. It's really, biology obsesses on it. And I should say, for example, with the um, COVID-19, some people get into this critical situation where their um, their red blood cells fall apart and then they, they this uh, heme oxygenase is, is upregulated, this enzyme that breaks down heme and eventually turns it into bilirubin. And that enzyme, heme oxygenase, is very, very interesting because it's normally anti-inflammatory. I mean, it basically mm-hmm. protects from inflammation. But if it gets this glycine residue messed up, it turns into a pro-oxidant enzyme. Oh, no. And releases ferro iron, which will um, cause all kinds of trouble reacting with the cytokines that are being produced by the immune system. So you get into a really big mess oh, if you've wow. got glyphosate in a situation where you've got a COVID-19 infection that's out of control. Right. It's a positive feedback loop. Right. So a couple other biggies that uh, we always think about, um, uh, wondering if there's any connection with vegetarian exercise, probiotics, prebiotics, any of those? um, Yeah, yeah, those are good. I mean, obviously you have to have healthy gut microbes because they are so critical for producing those gases and then for converting (laughs) those gases back into organic matter. They need to be working properly to do that. And, of course, they also need to be having that 
aromatic amino acid production system working, which of course means you know no glyphosate because that's going to wreck it. But you really need to get your gut in order. You need to have a healthy gut, and probiotics and prebiotics are both going to be useful for that. Wow. And so that means fermented foods. I should have mentioned that actually. Fermented foods. Yeah, fermented foods. And then you had mentioned before that the acetobacter in um, in in uh, 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 sauerkraut and mm-hmm. apple cider vinegar helps to break yes. down the glyphosate molecule. Yes, I'm hoping so. So certainly there are species of acetobacter that can break down glyphosate. No one has, as I, far as I know, proven that the ones that are in there do. But I'm hoping that they do. Yeah, and, uh, I've been adding a little bit of the apple cider vinegar and uh, uh, sauerkraut to, uh, juice to my to my compost pile, just a little bit to just throw it in there too. Oh, that's great. That's uh, probably a good idea. Because yeah. I've been trying to heal the soil, regenerative uh, agriculture stuff. Oh, my God, there's so much more, guys, we could have talked about, but we, we uh, are coming to the end. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stephanie, and for your generosity in using your incredible gifts as a scientist to help all of us and future generations be able to live healthier, um, healthier, longer, better, more vibrant lives. Uh, just It means so much to me. It makes me want to cry just thinking about you and um, your incredible open heart and, and mind. <laughs> thank you. Um, anyway, I also want to thank all of you out there for tuning in today, hanging in there through all this techno techno nerd talk. We, we can do this. Um, and I want to say thank you again to our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for making this program possible. Um, be sure to join us next time when Dr. Roger Hall, my dear friend uh, from way back from graduate school, uh, will be with us uh, with tips for staying happy, being productive. That's the name of his book, Stay happy, being productive, kind of timely as well during this COVID time. Um, To learn more about Dr. Stephanie Seneff and all of our incredible guests, and also to access loads of free wellness resources, I've been creating this wellness hub, Teresa's Wellness Hub, um, so you get the best of the best um, at your fingertips. And you can go to TeresaNicasio.com to find that. That's T-H-E-R-E-S-A, and like Nancy, I C A. S-S-I-O dot com. And did you have any last words, uh, Stephanie, for our listeners before we sign off? <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> yeah, stay safe. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. And I want you to know that I'm holding a special place in my heart for each each of you um, out there, and uh, and also especially for, again, our scientists who are who are tirelessly working um, to help all of us. Um, until we um, meet next time, um, you again, I'll say what Stephanie said, uh, be safe. <laughs>